I'm sorry, I've got an amazing fiancé now. Are you jealous? Envious. Her once cute face now appeared distorted before me, not just to me but to my sister and her husband as well. They had always looked down on my husband. My anger reached its peak, surpassing the limit of my patience. My name is Luna. I work at a printing company and I'm 27 years old. Although I work with printing, I'm not operating large machines. I work in the design department, crafting various flyers and catalogs while listening to customer requests. Recently, with the advancement of civilization, the number of prints has decreased, but the design work remains busy and rewarding. Thankfully, I have more customers requesting me specifically. The flyer for the recent Christmas event was a big hit. It was so cute. Such compliments truly make me happy. This job feels like a life purpose for me. I thought I would remain single, dedicating my life to work until one day my father was hospitalized for appendicitis. During a visit to see him, a young doctor named James approached me and asked, Hello, are you here to visit someone? It turns out he is my current boyfriend and recently became my fiancé. You never know when and where life will bring unexpected encounters. Despite being devoted to work as soon as marriage was brought up, I found myself buying wedding magazines. I guess I'm also getting carried away, sitting in the living room flipping through a magazine while having tea. Then it happened, a hand suddenly reached out, snatching the magazine away. Hey, wait a minute. What's this? A wedding magazine. Why are you looking at something like this? It has nothing to do with you, Mary, I said as my younger sister took the magazine from me. You're getting married. Seriously. Look in the mirror first, will you? You should know your place. You don't even have a boyfriend, let alone getting married. On the other hand, she continued, I've never been without a boyfriend. Oh, speaking of which, my current boyfriend. Mary always had this habit of bragging about her boyfriend. Unlike me, with my plain face, my sister has always been cute and popular. People around her always indulged her, except for our parents and me. Everyone around her was always a yes man. As a result, my sister started thinking of herself as the center of the world. The arrogant sister I grew up with began looking down on me. Stay away from me, your face might drop off on me. No matter how much you study, what's that brain of yours? You won't catch a guy. Why don't you give up on pointless efforts? Oh, I got asked that again. It's so tough being popular. I envy my sister, who doesn't get any attention at all. She would continue saying such things, even if our parents scolded her severely. It was already too late. Her personality remained unchanged and the verbal abuse towards me never stopped. Growing up, my sister now refers to me as you. Tired of my sister bragging about her boyfriend, I sighed and mustered up the courage to speak. I do have a boyfriend. In fact, we're engaged. We're getting married soon, so I'm looking at wedding magazines. My sister's movements abruptly stopped at those words. After staring at me intently, she smirked with a sarcastic smile. Oh really? So you managed to find a guy. What's so great about you anyway? He likes my energetic and cheerful personality. That's a lie. You're probably just being treated like a maid. I'll continue working and he understands that I can't be a perfect housewife. As I said that, my sister exaggeratedly acted surprised. Ha! Huh. You're getting married and still planning to work? How quaint, marrying a poor man. Her words struck a nerve. She just couldn't stop looking down on me. Money is not an issue. He's a doctor, so there's no problem with income. I just want to continue working. As I retorted, my sister fell silent immediately. I sighed with relief and returned to my room. Oh, a doctor, I see, my sister muttered those words with a meaningful tone. When marriage is on the table, the first thing to do is to meet with our parents. James came to my house. After greeting my parents, the relaxed atmosphere instantly changed the moment my sister appeared. Oh, is that the person you're engaged to? Quite handsome, isn't he, Mary? Weren't you out? I interjected. Of course, when my sister's fiancé is coming, I had to cancel my plans. Unbeknownst to her, I was relieved that she wasn't there by chance. It was because I had a bad feeling about it. It had happened several times in the past. When I was still a student, my sister stole my boyfriend. After becoming a working adult, I didn't have a boyfriend, and my sister kept making one after another, so such a thing didn't occur again. Although I felt uneasy about my sister coming back, she had grown up as well. I wanted to believe that she wouldn't do something like stealing my fiancé. My sister was oddly close to my fiancé. I couldn't help but notice a blush on James's cheeks. My bad feeling. Can we pretend that engagement never happened? 
I've decided to break up with you and start dating Mary, my sister's words hit the mark perfectly. Never did I imagine that even as a working adult, my boyfriend would be stolen by my own sister. I'm sorry I took your fee and Kate, but it can't be helped, right? After all, I'm cuter and more charming, and James' pursuit was so intense. Oh, being cute is such a crime, my sister's words, far from an apology, dripped with condescension. Beside her, James, once my fiancé, laughed and said, Seriously, who would have known that you had such a cute sister? If I had known, I wouldn't have gotten engaged to you. It's a good thing we're breaking up before getting married. The moment I saw that twisted smile on his face, any feelings I had for him vanished without a trace. All that remained was a sense of disgust. I'm glad I didn't marry someone like you, a man who easily moves on to another woman. Here, take Mary as a parting gift. You're just a sore loser. Seriously, you're not attractive at all. I'm not saying this out of spite, but I genuinely mean it. It seemed that the two of them, lost in their own delusions, didn't understand how I felt. It's a waste of time being involved with you too. Goodbye. You're just making excuses for losing. You're the waste of time here. I never want to see you again. Goodbye. They left, looking down on me until the very end. After that, due to my enraged parents, they were banned from seeing our family, so I never met them again. However, I heard through rumors that they got married, but I don't really care anymore. Three years had passed since I parted ways with my sister and her husband, and I turned 30 while diligently working as ever. In the midst of it, there was one customer who took a liking to my work and became a repeat client. His name was William. As we talked during work, for some reason, he asked me out for a meal, and then he asked me out on a date. On one of our dates, he asked me to be in a relationship with him. Honestly, I was really happy. William seemed very sincere, and I believed he wouldn't repeat the same mistakes as my previous boyfriend. But deep down, my sister had become quite a trauma for me. Maybe, just maybe, somewhere it bothered me a little. So, I decided to be honest and told him about my sister, about my former fiancé. I even showed him a picture of my sister and looked at his reaction. But even after seeing her photo, his expression didn't change at all. He casually glanced away from the photo and gave me a gentle smile. I know it might sound strange to say this, but I used to be quite popular. I've met many women who were cuter and more beautiful than your sister. But for some reason, none of them sparked my interest. I used to think that maybe I would remain single and unmarried for the rest of my life, but that wasn't the case. What do you mean? I asked, curious. I believe that due to my line of work, I have an eye for people. No matter how beautiful someone is or how well-dressed they are, they can't match their inner beauty. I realized that when I met you, Luna. Um, what do you mean? I stammered. I thought you were shining brightly, William said sincerely. When we talk about work, you're vibrant and beautiful. I thought you were wonderful, not just during work, but when we're having a meal or going on a date. You always smile and enjoy our time together. I could tell that you genuinely enjoy life, William confessed earnestly. And I thought you were dazzlingly beautiful. What? What? Wait, this is so embarrassing. I stuttered in my flustered state. But William continued, undeterred. Luna, you're beautiful, more beautiful and charming than anyone else. I've never met a more wonderful woman than you. Please consider being in a relationship with me with marriage as a possibility. I truly mean it from the bottom of my heart. Stop, it's too embarrassing. I can't take it anymore. I blushed and tried to stop him. But William's words didn't cease. In the end, even after agreeing to date, he continued showering me with such heartfelt words for a while. So embarrassing, I thought to myself. One year later, William and I got married, becoming a happily married couple. Our newlywed life was going well, and I felt like we became even closer than before we got married. We shared household chores whenever we could. Since my husband had been living alone for a long time, he might be better at housework than me. His homemade meals when I was tired were incredibly delicious. On our days off, we often went out together. One day, on a day off when he said he wanted to look at furniture, something unexpected happened. It was the reunion with the devil that felt like a nightmare. Oh, well, I thought as I saw a plain looking woman, it's you. I heard a voice from behind as I was looking at the bedding section. I didn't need to see her face to know who it was, even though four years had passed since we last met. There was no way I could forget her. Mary, my sister, stood there, and beside her was my former fiancé James. My sister's features seemed sharper than before. 
Was it due to age, or had her personality simply come to the forefront? Stating beside her, James wore a smirk, though it seemed he had lost weight. Meeting you here, huh? What are you doing? My sister asked, her tone dripping with condescension. Nothing special. I just came to look at furniture. I replied evenly. This place has a lot of imported goods and is expensive, you know. It's not a place for someone like you. I'm tired of your condescending attitude, James chimed in, stating beside her. Exactly. If someone like you keeps coming and going, it will lower the store's value. We might be mistaken for being poor, too. Just go home already. Their rude remarks irritated me, but engaging with them would be a waste of time. I maintained my silence. However, it seemed my attitude didn't sit well with them as my sister and her husband's voices grew louder. I hate it. Our precious high-end store is ruined. Why would such poor people come here? They can't afford anything anyway. That's right, that's right. Poor people, go home, they continued loudly. Other customers and store employees glanced at us, wondering what was going on. Hit up, I took my husband's hand and tried to leave, but he didn't move. Finally noticing my husband's presence, my sister and her husband looked at him. Oh, what are you to her? My sister asked, her eyes widening. Luna's husband. Ha, huh, can you marry this plain girl? Seriously, you're brave, James scoffed. Did you need a housemate or something? That's hilarious. I also do housework. It's only natural since we both work. I'm living comfortably as a full-time housewife. More than half of my week is spent eating out, and I rely on housekeeping services. I explained calmly. Sorry for being part of the winning team, my sister retorted with a sarcastic tone, stretching her words, which only fueled my frustration. She grinned at me. Sorry I stole your wonderful fiancé. Thanks to that, you'll have a poor life even after marriage, right? And to top it off, you're marrying such a plain guy. You two are a perfect match, both plain and unremarkable. Aren't you envious of my happiness? Jealous, aren't you? Haha, <laughs> marrying a man who can't support his wife is just like you. You'll struggle for the rest of your life, losers. I had reached my limit. I could bear it when they spoke ill of me, but to speak ill of my husband as well? There was no way I could tolerate it. Listen, that's enough. I finally spoke up. Luna, it's fine. My husband stepped forward in front of me. Nice to meet you. I'm William, the one who married your sister. What a lame name, my sister sneered. Well, I understand, William replied calmly, handing his business card to James. As James took the offered card, my husband glanced at my sister-in-law. You say really mean things to Luna, don't you? Because they're true. I'm just abiding by the law that says I can call an ugly woman ugly. That's my law, my sister fired back. Such a law doesn't exist. And for me, you're much uglier than you think, William retorted calmly but firmly. Let's say it's the ugliness of your character. You seem to have confidence in your appearance, but you don't realize that your twisted personality, which can only look down on others, is reflected on the outside. While his tone remained polite, his words were quite harsh. My sister's face quickly turned bright red. Don't mess with me, how am I ugly? Everything about you is. In the first place, beautiful people don't envy their sisters and steal their fiancés, William countered. What? When did I envy my sister? My sister protested. People aspire to get close to and surpass their admired figures. Isn't Luna such a figure for you? That's ridiculous, William concluded firmly. I was surprised, not just by my husband's words, but also by my sister's reaction. I had never considered it that way before. My sister had always looked down on me, but seeing her unsettled, I started to wonder if there was a possibility. If it's someone who doesn't matter, someone you don't care about, you can just ignore them. Even if Luna brings any kind of partner, you shouldn't have thought of taking them away. After all, they are not someone you found yourself. Taking someone else's position stems from jealousy towards something you can't obtain. No matter how hard you try, my husband calmly stated. I'm saying I'm not jealous, my sister retorted defensively. By taking something away, you want to have that confidence that you are superior to the other person, right? In other words, you lack confidence. Confident people can live proudly without doing such things. That's not true. My sister desperately refuted, but her voice gradually lost strength. Breaking the momentary silence, James suddenly shouted loudly with a pale face, this name. She alternated between looking at the business card and her husband's face, then shook her shoulders. What is it now? I asked. This name. I felt like I recognized it, so I looked it up. I looked it up and, how, William Brown, 
So what? She trailed off, her expression turning uncertain. Where I work, huh? Hospital. If I remember correctly, it's Brown Medical Corporation. A chairman and director, Dr. Brown. He's their son. Huh? What? Mary's voice faltered. It's a common surname, so it must be someone else, right? James interjected nervously. I've seen him come to the hospital a few times, together with the chairman. I saw them from a distance, so I didn't remember it well. But when I thought I had seen him somewhere, he's supposed to be a doctor, right? The company name on that business card. Huh, it doesn't mean that a doctor's son has to become a doctor. And this company, it's a super famous pharmaceutical company. I think the previous generation retired, and the grandson took over. I speculated. Hello, I'm that grandson. A voice interrupted. Mary and James panicked, and my husband bowed politely. What? What did you say? Mary gasped. Um. James faltered, his face pale. My husband calmly explained, I met Luna through the work I was doing until I took over my grandfather's job. I've heard about you, but it's beyond imagination how cruel you are. I interjected, my voice steady. Um. Well, that. James stammered, shifting uncomfortably. My husband shifted his gaze from my speechless sister to James. A job of helping people requires empathy. But instead of showing empathy, you look down on and ridicule others. Who would want to be treated by a doctor like that? Oh, well, it's just a misunderstanding, James attempted to explain, his face growing even paler. However, in the next moment, my husband's eyes widened with anger. No need for excuses. I'll let my father know about you. Just wait for the consequences. James exclaimed, desperation evident in his voice, while my sister remained stunned. Ignoring their pleas, we turned our backs and left. I knew deep down that we would probably never see them again. With that thought in my heart, I continued walking, refusing to look back. After that incident, James didn't get fired, but he faced a significant pay cut and was removed from responsible tasks. His arrogant attitude towards others and his cold demeanor with patience led to him receiving cold stares from everyone around him. Eventually, unable to handle the situation, he quit his job, leaving under a cloud of rumors within the hospital community which made it difficult for him to find new employment. He struggled with unemployment in the aftermath. As for my sister, it was revealed that she had always been reckless with money. Despite her high salary, her life became increasingly challenging. This stress visibly affected James, who began to look emaciated rather than just thin. In response to his pay cut, my sister quickly decided to divorce him, believing she could easily find another man. However, things didn't go as planned. When we met again, my sister's once cute face had hardened, revealing her true character. Her prime time for romantic relationships came to an abrupt end. Nobody wanted to be with her. Our parents later informed me that she had complained, I'm so cute, so why won't anyone spoil me? She became fixated on surpassing me, driven by some internal need to prove herself. My husband speculated that deep down, my sister actually admired me, though her actions were unforgivable. Eventually, she faced the consequences of her own choices, even being rejected by her parents when she sought their help. She disappeared into the nightlife, and we never heard of her again. Free from the curse of my sister and her husband, I enjoyed peaceful days, a calm married life, and a fulfilling job that ignited my passion every day. Soon, we would become a family of three. As I gazed at the computer monitor, I gently rubbed my growing belly, filled with anticipation for the future.